As we know, guitar tones can be very difficult to get to sit properly in the mix. Today, I'm going to show you one simple trick to add clarity and presence to your guitar amp sims. So without further ado, let's jump right in. So I'm assuming that you're all here because you had difficulty getting your guitars to sit in a mix and to stand out, and not only stand out, but sound good. And it's very difficult because guitars, cymbals, synths, and vocals all kind of sit in the same frequency range, especially in metal where there's distorted guitars, distorted vocals, saturated synths. It's very difficult to get them to sit right, and there's a lot of EQ curves that you can do. You can cut certain frequencies to make the guitars sit out better. You can cut certain frequencies in the cymbals so that the mid-range of the guitars sit in a better spot. And you can also dip and you can do multi-band tricks. So there is one trick that I don't really see anybody doing. So you may recognize the song from one of the last videos where I go over amp sim volume and how pushing the tubes can make a huge difference. If you haven't checked that out, check it out right here. I ended up finishing this entire song since the last episode. If you want to hear the whole thing, you can check out the link in the description to my BeatStars account. And if you're a vocalist and you're looking for music to perform on, check out that link. You can get a license and you can put out the music yourself. All the instrumentals that I put up there are available. You download it, licenses start as low as $50, and you can put it out as your own project. You can also use it as auditions for bands or to get something started. So I'll show you the chorus section that I wrote for that song. I'm using the STL Tonality Will Putney. Out of all of the years, of all the amp sims that come out, I still, I will say it's probably my most used. That one and the Josh Middleton, I really like the Josh Middleton one, especially for more noty stuff where more clarity's needed. Distorted and heavy guitars, I really like Will Putney's. He does a great job. And let me play the guitars on their own. <laughs> I have my main rhythm tones, which I've shown you already. And then I have a dub layer, which is a secondary performance. So this is the left guitar, right guitar, second performance. Third performance is my quad left and fourth performance is my quad right. And it already adds a lot of thickness just by being a secondary layer that are more sunk back in the mix and a bit quieter, but just filling it out. And usually what I like to do with my quads is to not have them completely left and right. My main guitars, are all the way left and right completely. And then my dub guitars are, you can see 40 left and 40 right, or in Pro Tools, we would say 80 left and 80 right. So they're just a little bit more in the middle just to fill out my stereo field a little bit more. These are my dubs. And for those, I'm just using the STL Ignite. And I use some preset called Meatballs and just kind of mess with it until it sounded good enough. And basically with this guitar, I'm just getting like a bit more low end and a bit more thickness. And I'm using most of the mid range and the chunk out of my rhythm guitars, my left and right. Quads are more of the heaviness or more of the low end thickness. So I'll play you with the quads and without the quads. <laughs> You can hear that since I'm not going crazy with distortion on the quads, it's adding a lot of clarity to the note and the chugs are coming through a bit more. Everything's a little bit clearer and everything's a little bit louder, which is nice for the chorus. I always quad my choruses no matter what. I will sometimes do six layers if I've already quadded the entire song. So that's that, but we haven't gone over the hidden feature. So my new hidden feature that I really like to do, and I've started doing this a couple months ago and really honed in on it. I will make a secondary layer of the rhythm guitars. You can see I just copied and pasted all these. Copy, pasted them down here. And then I put an amp, but I turned the cab off. And it sounds terrible on its own, but check this out. What this is doing is allowing me to not have to like focus all of my tone on one amp sim. So my rhythm tones don't have to be completely all of my low end, they don't have to be all of my mid range, and they don't have to be all of my high end. One amp never does it. 
I always either have to quad guitars or do something like this. So when I try to get the mid range, the low end and the high out of my rhythm tones on this Will Putney run right here, it just doesn't work. I don't know what's going on. I just, I can, I never can get it to work. It's similar to what people do with bass amps where they'll use one that's just the low end and one that's just the high end and kind of blend those two. My treble is quite low and that's because I just didn't need it because I'm relying a lot of my treble on the no cab section. So this chorus is with the quad guitars as well as the no cab guitars. And they're at minus 14 dB as well as being minus 6 dB on each layer. So very quiet. I love this technique because to me, metal music should sound nasty. It shouldn't sound too clean and too polished. And this makes it sound nasty, but polished in a way because my rhythm tones and my quads are quite polished and they're not too high endy or too distorted. And then I can really hone in. And if I want a certain part to be more cutty or more thick, then I just go up or down with the no cab guitars. Just being that quiet, like extremely quiet in the mix, it adds a lot of tone to the guitars. Good for hardcore, good for punk, good for metal, good for anything. So that's that on the chorus. Let me go through the chuggy section from the last episode and you'll see how much of a difference this kind of technique makes on chugs. <laughs> To me, that's a killer sound. I love that. And again, as with anything, you want to make sure that it's in phase. I already did this earlier. I already know it's in phase, but just so you're aware. It's a little thin when I flip it, so that means it was fine in phase before I flipped it. Although it might sound a little more scooped and you may think that sounds cool, it's actually with your tone let me just solo one it's the same thing you choose whichever amp you want you eq it the way that you like but you just turn the cab off and you can see like there's a drastic difference switching between the amps i noticed that the diesel as well as whatever amp three on this stl will put any tonality is um they both have like a nice cut to it whereas the other ones have a bit more of a mid-range so check it out Use your discretion, play with the tones, find whichever amp combination sounds really good to you and roll with it. I am a big advocate for mixing amp sims. So when mixing the guitars, I will put my amp sim on and get it to sound cool to me and then I'll duplicate it and whatever that amp tone is missing, I'll get out of my secondary amp. Let me show you the beginning of the song where it's more of a riffy sound. <laughs> I don't know why and I can't explain it, but it makes the notes clearer. It gives you a little bit more of that distortion sound without having to go too heavy gain on your actual amp. And then by going heavy gain, you lose your tone and you lose your mid range. You don't have to go too crazy with any one layer. Mixing layers is huge. And obviously if this is like a little bit too dirty and too distorted for you, then just like use a different amp sim, keep the cab on if you really want. I noticed that like mixing the Josh Middleton STL as well as the Will Putney STL with like a Fortin Nameless, for instance. I use the Nameless for like the chuggy sound and then like the STLs for more of the note definition. And I get really cool results with that too. And what I used to do before doing this cab thing, I used to have like a secondary, like an auxiliary channel. So I'll show you what I used to do. Let's make a new auxiliary here. <clears throat> And then I'll send the guitars to the auxiliary and then I would put some sort of like saturator. Let's say like decapitator or something. You know me, I love these plugins. So I'll solo this.
It's doing a lot of the same heavy lifting that the no cab variant is doing, except with this, you can hear that it's also compressing because we're saturating. When we do the no cab thing, it's not compressing, it's just like, it's just gross. So it gets the grossness that I like out of the decapitator auxiliary, but it's not doing the compression. And you'll notice on chugs, it's, it's okay, but when you're doing bends, the compression gets very obvious because the volume drops, and I personally hate that. So I know I personally love this technique. Let me know what you think of it. Also, let me know what you'd like me to focus on next. What do you have issues with? I really hope it helps you on your journey. If you like this video at all, please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. It really makes a difference in the algorithm. As I grow this channel, I can make more videos if there's more reason. I uh, appreciate you checking it out. Let me know down below your thoughts, and I'll see you next time. See ya.